My guest today is Buck Woody. Buck, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I really appreciate you being on my show. I've heard your name so many times, and I finally got to meet you and invited you on, and you said yes, so I'm, I'm excited. Excellent. Me too. Me too. Uh-huh. Always always happy to talk. And I'm excited because I, I, I've, the context in which I've heard your name is databases. You're really well known in the database space uh, as, a, as an expert on all mm. things data. Mm. Expert, I think, is a nice way to say experienced or old, right? Experienced, I don't, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. I just know what not to do. I think I, if, you drive, if you drive long enough, you learn where the potholes are. So I think that's, that's half the battle. <laughs> uh, well, the potholes, in this case, I want to talk about our security. Because yes. I, I think security has always been important. But I think in recent years, people mm. have started to recognize the importance. Yeah. So, yeah. That, is that a fair statement? It's a very fair statement. I think there's a whole bunch of factors that have come into play there that have made that true. Uh, for one, we have people that are uh, uh, growing a little older in the career field and moving on. And some of the folks <laughs> that are coming in new have not had to come up in the same path. A lot more things are done. A lot more things are uh, taken care of for you and so on. Ah. So. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's right. a good thing. But there are some fundamentals that are not always taught anymore. You've got so many other things to learn about BI and machine learning and AI and, and security sometimes, especially database security, sort of takes a little bit of a backseat. And I think the other thing is there's a lot more data. Uh, there's just, you know, we've got data everywhere now and right. we're pushing it all over the place. And so uh, you've just got a plethora of places to be attacked, the attack surface, if you will. And right. then we've got this other weird new thing of like the whole state-sponsored actors that are joining into the fray and some of the tools from nation states that are very sophisticated uh, okay. to breach security okay. have leaked over into the um, sort of the cyber terror you know, environment. So they have some pretty sophisticated tools um, that you can use to, to, to attack a system. And so it's just an ever-increasing threat an ever-increasing footprint, and uh, the data professionals are asked to do so much more that some of the fundamentals aren't always given the, the time that they sort of deserve. So I uh, actually built a course recently, David, on uh, data security and went around the United States teaching it, and I'll be doing that again uh, in the next little while. Oh, nice. um, and I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll give you that link. You can put it in your show it's- notes or whatever. Um, it's you can do it online. There's no video online. You, it's a self-taught thing. But I also teach it sort of in person. Great. So let's talk about some of the threats to, and how we as data professionals can address those. So uh, the first thing is uh, there's some 101 stuff you do uh, that's not always done. Patching, for instance, we we think about patching. It's often difficult for us to patch our systems uh, because we've got all these apps. I went to one place recently that had uh, 2,500. 2,500 custom applications against a data server uh, Mm -hmm. that was being used. Um, So that was really difficult to even like test a patch that comes out. How do I test it? I have to get 2,500 sign-offs that it's okay to install the service pack, right? So getting some rigor around around that. And and then of course, just upgrading to the latest version. Um, I've got tons of companies, I was working with a DBA last night, and uh, he is upgrading someone, one of his customers from 2005 (laughs) to, yeah. And and, you know, if you think about it, I, I started at Microsoft about that time. Uh, and so I, I've had a good run here, but if you think about it, that's really old. And in, in t- how many years is that in technology seven, years? Oh yeah, 17 in r- real person years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but in technology, technology moves so fast. That, it uh, does, it that's does. Weird. And these people, of course, will buy the latest smartphone that comes out, obviously. <laughs> you know, they don't have a problem with that, but when you say- shoes, of course. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you say, hey, upgrade your database. They're like, well, that, you, just, you, just want, you just want us to spend money. And you're like, well, yes, but it's also 17 years of security patches we've done. Yeah. Um, so, so I would say be on the latest version you can. I realize you're not just every year going to upgrade your database server because it's a difficult thing to do. So that's a couple things right there. The other thing is just to identify your attack surfaces. And to do that, there's a, a paradigm called defense in depth. And defense in depth merely talks about if you think a series of fences around a building, 
It's just putting the fences in place, like the building itself, the physical, and the and so on. And then your operating system, and even drivers on your operating system have security patches, like your your host bus adapter, if you still have those, and that sort of thing. Um, and, and so you do the defense in depth all the way back to the data itself. There's ways to uh, encrypt data. There's ways to encrypt columns of data. There's ways to encrypt rows of data. There's ways to encrypt the data at rest. There's ways to encrypt the data and, and, you know, in movement. Uh, and all these are built right into SQL Server. They're built right into the package that you can do these things. And they're well documented in the course I cover sort of talks about that. And David, the new paradigm is called zero trust. Have you heard of this? I have. Tell me what that is though. Yeah. So I, it, the, people make it so complicated and so confusing. And I really, I'm a simple person, so I have to boil it down. Simple is good. So, yeah, so for me, defense in depth is what you're supposed to do. Like, make sure nobody can get in the perimeter. But it doesn't tell you how to do that. And so, and so zero trust really just says, here's how you do that. And one of them is verify explicitly. One of the paradigms there is verify explicitly. That means just because you came to my house doesn't mean you can walk up to my bedroom and start looking in the drawers. I would verify that you're able to do that as well. So you don't just say, oh, he's in the house. It's all good. You know, you say, well, you can be in the house, but you know, you're going to have to ask somebody if you want to go back in the bedroom and you're going to have to ask somebody else if you want to look through the drawers or whatever. So this is this idea of verify explicitly. Once again, this is all covered in the course. But I would it sounds just say, like the distinction between authentication and authorization. Authentication yeah. says, oh, I recognize Buck. Yeah. He's allowed my, or I, I just, it just means I recognize Buck. Right. Whether or not he can come in my house, whether or not he can go into the drawers, whether yeah. or not he can access table, the customer yeah. table, uh, yeah. that's authorization. And it sounds like that's well, the distinction. Well, it's very simple there. Uh, authentication is is saying, who, who is this? Who do I, who do I, uh, and, and identity, by the way, is before that, it says, who do I say I am? I show up. So if I were to call you today, David, and say, hey, you know, I'm at a conference. I know you live next door uh, to my, my house. Would you mind running over uh, to my house and ask Marjorie, my wife, for the car keys? And you'd say, sure, and you'd knock on the door. Marjorie sees you out there, and she goes, I'm sorry, who are you? And you'd say, I I'm David. I've lived for 10 years. <laughs> and, yeah, I I'm David. And she would go, okay. So that's who you say you are. That's identity. Yeah. Okay. But then, then you would say, uh, I'm Buck's friend. And she would call me and say, there's a guy named David outside. So I'm there authenticating you. you. That's David. Big, big guy, glasses, white hair. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, that's him. That's good. And, that's and so that's identity is who you say you are. And the authentication is who someone else says you are. So in Active Directory, we have things to do that sort of thing. So once that's done, then authentication is when I say uh, to Marjorie, he can have my keys. She uh, would not just no, let author, you in the house. Authorization. Yeah, she would not just let you in the house. She would go get the keys and say, you're allowed to have these. That's authorization. Now, I may say, let him come inside and go to the table and get the keys off the table. That's a different authorization. So this idea of zero trust means you're only allowed to do what you're allowed to do. And if you tried to go, let's say, in a different part of your house, maybe my daughter's visiting and she goes, who are you? That's verify explicitly. You say, oh, I'm David. Your mom knows who I am. And she'd say, mom, do you know who this is? And then once again, that's an authorization or authentication rather from, from Marjorie saying to Christina, yeah, that's David, he's okay. He's allowed to get the keys. Once again, the authorization of what you're allowed to touch. So if you think about it in these formats, like it just really defense in depth and zero trust are great ways to think about how you can secure your system. And there's a whole checklist in that course. I've got everything that shows you how to do every part of the defense in depth in a checklist. Yeah. So now there's a lot of things that you can do here. Uh -huh. uh, do we need to do everything? Do we need to encrypt our data and update our patch our software and update the latest version? Or are there things that we look at and recognize and say, oh, this is what my system looks like. These are the threats. These are the yeah. this is how I address them. Yeah. One of the other things inside of Zero Trust is assume breach, okay. which is kind of interesting. You know, if you go to a large building right now, somebody in there is sick. You know that. There's somebody in there has the flu or something, right? You just know that. So maybe you don't give everybody a big sloppy kiss or go start hugging everybody or eating off of their plate or anything like that. You just, you're aware that that's pro. So you've taken some countermeasures. You, you eat right. off your own plate. 
Um, you don't shake hands or you don't kiss the person or whatever it happens to be, right? So that's the same thing you do with your data. You assume, what would it look like if somebody was in my data? And you can simply go back through your logs and see where the IP addresses come. Wait a minute, what country is that? We don't have any users in that country. Mm -hmm. And so you can you can use those things to do exactly what you said. But you made an interesting question there. You said, um, do we need to do everything? And the answer is no, at least do something. Okay. Um, the script kiddies that are trying to break in, a majority of them, uh, are just walking around the neighborhood trying doors. And if one's open, they'll go in. So don't leave your doors open. Make sure the passwords are changed and strong. Make sure, just do the basics. I mean, at least, at the very least, do the basics. And we've got so many tools to help you do that. We've got Microsoft Defender, which runs in Azure and on-prem. Uh, we have got all these different tools that you can use, but I don't really care which tool you use. I care that you use a tool to keep my social security number out of the bad guys. Now, if a, a nation state actor wants your data, the odds are they're gonna get it, right? It, they, they're good at what they do, really good at what they do. So, yeah. but then does a nation state really want your data, that the kind of data that you store, who knows? But please at least lock the front door and uh, take the gold jewelry and off the table where you can see it from the window and go put it in a locked drawer. So you don't have to encrypt the whole database. Um, there are ways to encrypt parts of it. There are ways to encrypt certain columns and, and so on. So again, it's it's kind of common sense, except that common sense um, isn't that common anymore. Is it? <laughs> That's true. I, I've heard this phrase uh, phrased as uh, you want to make the cost of hacking in and stealing the data greater than the value of the data itself. And I, so you know, the cost yeah. of what you just described, things like you know changing your password, right. it's very low cost. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it'll protect, I don't know, I'll throw a number here, 90% of yeah. your data. That extra 10%, uh, some of it is really, really valuable. For, if yeah. you lost social security numbers, sure. that, that'd be sure. a huge cost to that. Yes. So we want to spend a lot of money exactly. securing that. Exactly. And sometimes when you, you made an interesting statement there that said, um, just make the cost higher than the value. Um, you know, if they're trying the house and they see that you've got an alarm system or whatever, they're just going to move on to the next house. So I'm reminded of the old story of the two guys that went camping and they heard a bear outside. And they were you know, paralyzed with fear. And so the first guy says, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to take off running. And the other guy stops and starts putting on his tennis shoes. And the guy looks at him and says, why are you putting your tennis shoes on? You're not going to outrun a bear. And he goes, I don't have to outrun the bear. I have to outrun you. <laughs> and that's kind of what you're doing. If you just at least lock up, you know, maybe they'll move on to a different car. I mean, that's that's what you're kind of doing. So at least do the basics, at least do the basics. And again, I've got a checklist on this site and there are a lot of them out there. Uh, at least just follow the main parts of the checklist. And, and it's not that hard, uh, okay. but it is work. It is work. All right. So with the basics, uh, beyond the basics, what's, what will be the next step? So the next step you're going to do is start following that zero trust model and you're going to start evaluating what applications and how they hit your database. So they may hit it in a variety of different ways. One is they may use Windows logins and then that can be passed through to SQL Server. There's an ability to do that. They may use SQL Server logins where SQL Server itself controls the password or, or they may, in the worst part unfortunately and this is very common is that the application maintains a database of users and permissions and privileges and then it goes in on the user's behalf to do everything in the database and this is great because there are no logins to the database except the main super user from the app the problem is if anybody gets that password or breaches that access they have everything uh, so I would just say know what your applications do and make sure you're auditing to make sure did that person leave the company? I can't tell you how many times I've gone in almost every time. In fact, when I go and look at a customer's uh, environment, uh, we'll, we'll run a, pull a little list of the users and I'll say, are these people still here? What are you talking about? Can you just look? Oh, that guy left five years ago. <laughs> you know, it's still a name, and you know whether that person is going to try to break in. But that's a hole. You know, there's there's a hole there. So I would just say, just work your way back. Start with the simple, and just start working your way back. What is your opinion on the current state of security in the database world today? Yeah, I think we've put a lot more safeguards. All of us, all of the database vendors and data vendors. By the way, we're not just talking about structured data anymore. 
uh, we're talking about unstructured data, so just file systems and so on. Right. Most of the vendors these days are building in a lot more, at least capability, if not preemptive things, to close holes off and things and so on. So I think there's just having the latest stuff actually actually helps. So I think the state's better that way because people are upgrading things. They have to as they run out of, of things, uh, space and so on. Um, but I would say that, you know, we've, we've seen recently in the news a, a high trend toward a lot of IT people sort of going away, uh, getting laid off or, or moving on or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's troublesome uh, because, unfortunately, security is often a tax, isn't it? I mean, it's not, it's not a selling point of something unless you're a bank or an armored car company. It's usually not something you lead on the advertising glossy page right. with, right? Features should, sell. Not it the should be. Yeah, you're right. The features are what sell, not not the security. But it should. You know, Apple. I'm not a huge Apple fan. I'm not a Apple hater either. But Apple ran a very interesting commercial a, a few months ago, where a person went in with their phone to buy something at the coffee shop, and when they did. Um, a person from the coffee shop followed them outside and got in their car with them and was looking at their phone as they were driving. And then they stopped at a gas station, they bought some gas, and a guy from the gas station comes in and sits down, and a couple of advertising execs come running in. They all get in the car, and at the end of the commercial, there's like 40 people going through this guy's house, looking through his books and his drawers, and he's sitting there on his phone. And it was to advertise the new safety features of the latest smartphone. But it was a, if we could really see uh, what people can see about us, uh, it would frighten us, I think. I think we'd have a whole different world in that area. So I think, to answer your question, the state is um, good, but in, in peril. I think it's in peril. Yeah, I actually have not seen that commercial, but I understand the metaphor that they're using. Yeah. We use our phones as a convenience, mm -hmm. and the, that convenience has a trade-off. Oh, sure. Because we're opening up, and yeah. now I'm getting my, uh, if I exposing my credit card, my personal information, my Facebook profile to the world. Yeah. Those are yep. holes in my security layer, my personal security. Absolutely. That and if you're if you're not time. paying for it, you're the product. Right? We if say you're not, exactly. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you are what's being sold. And and what's being sold about you? Well, your personal information. So yeah. uh, it's pretty frightening. Now, can you be a Luddite and cut everything off and not be tracked and so on? I don't know. I, I think you, you you just take common sense measures of, sure. of uh, doing the right thing. Yeah, and being aware of what it's being shared. That's right. What you're exposing. Yeah, that's Are right. you comfortable with that? Yeah. Uh, excellent. Um, you're... Um, Tell me about this course. When uh, is it available now, and mm -hmm. how can people mm -hmm. get access to it? Yeah, I write a lot of courses. You can find them, um, at, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you this in the notes, but we'll go ahead and say it in case somebody's just listening, but it's aka uh, dot ms, Microsoft ms, and then forward slash, the one that leans to the right, and all of my courses are available at SQL Workshops with an S. So aka.ms forward slash SQL workshops. Um, the particular one for security you can find uh, is at aka.ms, that's just a URL shortener, forward slash SQL security 101. Uh, so if you type that in, you'll, you'll get to that course. These are all on GitHub, and there'll be a main page there. And if you go to those, you can see the layout of the course and the modules that are addressed. And then you'll progress through a section where you do setup, uh, where you actually install. These are all hands-on, so you ah, need okay. some software to make sure that you can type things. And there's ways to get the software for free and so on. Um, and then there's a scenario that's presented. And then you will walk through. Now, in the security course, it's kind of interesting because... Actually, in the first module, set the groundwork for computing security, not just database security, because databases usually live in a larger concept of computing. And in many companies, uh, there's no defined security team. It's sad, but it's the way it is. And so the DBA, the data professional, has to reach out and go, OK, are we following in generally in IT? Are we following these guidelines? Because for instance, if I put a lock on the drawer in my bedroom, I'm um, the DBA, and I've locked the drawer in my bedroom, but David still can roam around the house because no one's practicing security, is that really secure? And the answer is no. David will find the key and open the box, right? So 
Um, it's, it's a combined effort of everyone working together that has to do this. But you'll find the course there. And then there's a very end. I show you how to do a, um, an after action report when you've been breached because it's going to happen. Uh, and I show you what to do. And the best uh, DBAs are always very paranoid. We're always looking for what do we do when it goes wrong because we know it will. Mm -hmm. So I cover that. And I also have a full checklist for you. And there's even a very cool simulated environment we have called Simuland at Microsoft, mm -hmm. where you can go in and there's all these Active Directory forests set up and it's a game gamified kind of thing. Very, very cool, very cool stuff. Very nice. And you said, this, so this is, I'm looking at it right now, the uh, uh, SQL Server Security Ground to Cloud. It's all self-paced. It's all free, which is awesome. Yes, sir. Uh, but you're also delivering it in person as well. I do it in person, uh, and I actually uh, have condensed it. I've built the modules in such a way that I can deliver it in a one-hour session as a course oh, wow. audit. And mm -hmm. so I will walk you through the course. We don't obviously cover the material, but I show you how to cover the material. And in my Tampa SQL user group that I'm, I'm involved with here in the local area, David Cease is a gentleman that runs that. Um, he and I are doing each module once a month. So in our oh, meeting, cool. yeah. And that's also online and available for free. So if you, if you look up uh, SQL Server user group Tampa, you'll find us and you're welcome to join that one for free. Um, those are not right being recorded. Now. Yeah, those are not being recorded, obviously. But uh, you can watch them online. That's right. You can anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Meetup.com. Yes, it. sir. That's right. That's right. Um, send those links to me. I will put them in the show notes. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, we'll resources. do that. Yeah. Uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that we th you think we should have? Um, I, I know it's a tax. Uh, I, would, I would actually just say I, I know it's a tax. I know it's extra work. Um, but if you want your data protected, from the bad guys, and I'm, I'm assuming you do. Um, so does everyone else. And so it's a tax you need to pay, and we all need to pay it together um, to, to make sure we we protect the most important thing. At the end of the day, by the way, the bad guys are not after your app. They could care less about your application. They don't care about you. They, don't care. they want your bank account number and your Good. social security number and your medical records. Uh, and it's just, there's so many, every time I see a ransomware attack, when we go in and look, well, I'll give you an example. So we'll close out with this. Um, I was on my way to teach this course in Chicago and Texas and Atlanta and other places. I get off the plane in Atlanta. I was flying American Airlines and they're not bad people. They're great people. And, and I fly lots of different airlines. I got off of the airplane, uh, check my phone, of course. And the news reported that uh, American Airlines had just been hacked. Uh, so I'm like, oh, that's great. So I get in my Uber, I go to the hotel, I get out of the car in, in Uber and get to the hotel, I get an alert that Uber has been hacked. <laughs> so it's like... Maybe, maybe they're following you. I was worried about the hotel at this point. So I looked up how the Uber attack worked. Let me explain how this worked. And this, this is, a, I think, a good place for us to end. What had happened was they found somebody that worked at the company and they found her phone number, her actual cell phone number. And... They, they tried to log in as her at the company. And of course they had multi-factor authentication turned on. So it said, um, here's the challenge, give us the code. So they texted the lady and said, we're from IT. We're doing a systems check. There's been some attempts of break-ins. So we're gonna send you a code and you need to read what you get on your phone back. Mm -hmm. They sent her the challenge code. She opened her authenticator and sent them the proper credentials back. Uh, they logged in as her. Now, she couldn't do that much, the particular role she had in that company. But what they did at Uber is they then did um, an escalation of privilege where they emailed one of the IT people. Once they could look at the emails, they, they got the IT person and said, I think I've been hacked. Is this, is this a bad sign? Here's my screen. They included a print screen, but it had a Trojan in it. And IT mm. opened it up. Uh. And it used their email account to send to an administrator, hey, we have an incident report of a hack. Here's the details. And that person opened the email. Uh. And sure enough, now the entire company was infected. So it was that quick and that easy and it wasn't even tech it was just social engineering uh, i think that's the lot. point that this yeah. story makes is that you can do everything right in terms of technology you can but you still have human beings that make mistakes it's not even, software it's not hardware it's, I web, mean, the it's IT, wetware the <laughs> it department 
yeah. should know better, but they didn't. They, 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 they in this case, a mistake. yeah. I mean, you see that you're like, oh my gosh, what did she do? And you opened it up, and it wasn't hers. Now you. Right. So yeah, so interesting stuff, David. Um, and it's a it's a scary world, and uh, you know we have secure networks. That's like saying that's an oxymoron, isn't it? Secure means keep <laughs> out, and network means allow in. So we have a keep out, allow in network. Uh, so obviously that's a, that's a tough thing. So um, you want to do the, the you want the right people to access the right stuff in the right way at the right times, and there's ways to do that. Excellent. Well, Buck, thank you so much for your time. I've learned a lot. In the Absolutely. Last oh, thank you so much. Great to chat with you. Yeah. You have a great day, and you stay safe. Thank you, sir. Talk to you soon. <music>